In this video, I want to talk about what lagged independent variables actually mean in a model and what their purpose and motivation is. So the idea here is, let's say I have a model which is modeling a company's sales at a given point in time. And we're saying that that model depends, or that company's sales rather, depends on the level of advertising at time t, but it also depends on the amount of advertising which they've done in the past. So it might depend on the amount of advertising they did last week, a t minus one. And let's say we think it might also depend on the amount of advertising which they do the week before that. So this is a model which is slightly different to models which we've seen before because we haven't just got unique independent variables we've got lagged values of a given independent variable in our model. So what do these individual coefficients on these lagged values of the advertising variable actually mean in these circumstances? Let's start with beta naught. So beta naught tells us how much if advertising was to go from some amount which was fixed a bar to some amount, let's say a bar plus one, beta naught tells us what is the instantaneous effect of that change in advertising spend. And because of that, we call beta naught the impact parameter because it shows the instantaneous impact of a change in the independent variable. Okay, so what do beta one and beta two mean? Well, it's quite easy really. Beta one just tells us what is the effect on sales tomorrow of a change in advertising spend today. And beta two similarly just tells us what is the change in advertising two days or two time periods from now if we increment advertising spend by one now. And it's actually quite common to draw a graph which demonstrates the actual weight of these individual coefficients. So the idea with this graph is that the x-axis specifies the lag. So we start off with lag zero. So in other words, we're dealing with this variable. And then we move to lag one, lag two, or in general, sort of continuing up until we reach the last lag of the model, if that is indeed possible. So the idea here is that we, on the y-axis, actually graph the individual coefficient values. So we might think that advertising has its largest impact today. So perhaps beta naught is somewhere like that. And then after one period, the effect of advertising is slightly less. So perhaps beta one or the effect of um, on sales is somewhere like that beta one, which is lower than beta two. And then perhaps after two periods, it falls a little bit further and because there isn't a third lag in this model, we essentially are specifying that the effect on sales of advertising three periods from now is zero. So if we were to join up those points, which doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line, it might look something like that. So this is what we would call our lag distribution, because it's telling us the impact of changes in independent variables in future periods and it's specified by the order of lag on that particular coefficient which we're talking about. And another interesting thing to find out is what is the long run impact of a change in advertising on a on sales in this particular example. So the idea here is that we specify before the change that advertising at time t is just fixed. The amount of advertising which is being spent every week is just fixed. And then from that, we get a corresponding fixed level of sales, which using our model up here is equal to alpha plus beta naught times we're going to have a bar times beta naught, but we're going to have a bar in all of these after each of these coefficients. So we can just write that S bar is equal to alpha plus beta naught plus beta one plus beta two times a bar. And we assume that on average, this error term here is zero. So we're just going to kind of forget about it for now. Okay, so this is the long run relationship between the level of advertising and the level of sales. 
What then happens if we let advertising increase? So we let advertising go from A bar to A bar plus one. Well, if that happens, then the idea here is that the new level of advertising or the new level of sales rather is equal to alpha plus beta naught plus beta one plus beta two times a bar and in theory I could sort of, sort of put a bracket around here and then do a bar plus one but I'm going to write it slightly differently essentially if we were to multiply out that bracket we would then get left over beta naught plus beta one plus beta two so when we examine the difference between s bar and the new level of s bar s bar primed we find that the change in sales associated with this change in advertising spend is equal to beta naught plus beta one plus beta two. So the sum of the coefficients on the independent variables in a model determines the long run effect of a change in advertising on sales. And we call that beta LR.